so we are here in Orlando, Florida with uh, world famous motivational speaker Les Brown. Les Brown, nice to meet you. Thank you, it's a pleasure meeting you as well, huh? Well, the pleasure is all mine. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thank you for this meeting um, and the chance to interview you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, many people in Finland right now want to know a little bit about you. Yes. And I know that many also know about you already. But can can you tell us your story? Yes. In a, in a short. Well, I was born in a poor section in the in the United States of Miami, Florida, called Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor with a twin brother. And when we were six weeks of age, we were adopted. And and when I was in the fifth grade, I was identified as EMR labeled educable mentally retarded, put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade, and I failed again when I was in the eighth grade. I don't have any college education, but because of my mother and and I. I, I I feel like Abraham Lincoln who said, all that I am and all that I ever hope to be, I owe to my mother. She inspired me to want to achieve more and to do more and to, to provide for her because of the fact that she, she adopted altogether uh, not only myself and twin brother, but also five other children. And so when I look at my life and my story, my mother worked on Miami Beach as a domestic worker. And we ate the food left over from the families that she cooked for. And we wore the hand-me-down clothes of the children that she kept. And I used to say to her, working in these big, beautiful homes, I said, Mama, and she said, what is it? I said, one day, I'm going to buy you a big, beautiful home just like this. And I did do that. And so because of her example, because of her unstoppable spirit and her faith, I contribute that to being who I am now, to making me become the person that I have become. What has your mission in life been, or what is it? My mission in life has been, and still is, is to, to give people a vision of themselves beyond their mental conditioning and their circumstances, to let them know that they have greatness within them. But Han, greatness, it's not our destiny. It's a choice that you have to make every day. You have to put yourself in a state of perpetual discomfort in order to manifest your greatness. You've got to reach outside of your comfort zone. So every day I look forward to the opportunity to inspire people to reach higher, to understand and know that what they have done is only a tip of the iceberg of what's possible for them. Yeah, I remember you saying that in the first audio program I ever had. Uh -huh, yes, that, yeah. you, that you have greatness within it and to prove it that you were chosen one out of 400 million sperm. Yeah, yes! <laughs> first big victory. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, the event in Finland will be we will discuss a lot all, a lot also about responsible business and yes. good business ethics. What is responsibility all about in your eyes? Re responsibility to me is it's about understanding and knowing that you have the power to control your destiny. That it's about living your life from a place of creation. That most people go through life doing what I call living their lives as volunteer victims. When you take responsibility for your life, it's about knowing that you have to develop yourself, that you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. You have to develop your mind, you have to develop your skills, you have to have a talent, ability, that, that you are cultivating so that you can create value for the world with what it is you have, with your gift. There are three primary reasons that most people don't, in my estimation, achieve their greatness. And one is that most people don't know what they have going for them. For years I did not do what I'm doing now because I didn't believe in myself. The second reason is most people don't know how to earn money using their talents, their abilities, their skills, and their gifts. And the third reason is that most people don't know how to gain access to the people that will pay them for what they know. So as entrepreneurs, one, we have to believe in ourselves. And that's an ongoing process, engaging in things that that will help us to believe in ourselves because we we are cultivated in a world where we're told more about our limitations rather than our potential and so faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and so we have to constantly go to seminars go to workshops listen to audio programs and and read books that will help to expand our vision of ourselves of what's possible for us and and the other thing is that's very important is working to expand your skill set to develop your skills, to take your skills to the next level. And the other thing that's important is, is having relationships with people that you can learn from, that you can grow from, people that will challenge you and that will cause you to raise the bar on yourself and hold you accountable to a higher standard. 
who have been the best speakers, coaches, mentors you know for, for yourself? When, when I think in terms of, of mentors, I think in terms of uh, Mr. Leroy Washington, who was a high school teacher of mine, who told me, Mr. Brown, develop your mind and develop your communication skills, because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. Uh, I, I admired his communication skills. He's a speech and drama instructor when I was in high school. The other was Dr. Anthony Sweeting, um, that he and I now work together. We were raised together and, as kids, and, and he's a great orator. and has such raw talent, ability, and power. I, I admire him. And Mike Williams, who's been a, a strategist and, and has taught me the value of having content as well as the skill to deliver a message that will empower people. Those have been the, the greatest mentors for me in terms of my style and what I deliver and the experience that I create when I'm speaking to an audience. You are, you are one of the greatest speakers in the world. Uh, thank you. It's very kind of you to say that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm really sure about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, who are, in your opinion, the other greatest speakers in the whole world? Living right now, um, President Barack Obama. I mean, he is. He has not only skill and knowledge, but there's a warmth and there is an ability to speak strategically that will that combine audiences. Whenever you are speaking to an audience. You, there, you're addressing audiences inside of each audience. People are separated in groups in an audience by age, by income, by position, by title, and, and, and by the money that they earn and their education. And so he has the ability to create a committed listening uh, with divergent mindsets and political views and religious views. He's able to unify people um, with his passion, with his energy, but also he is a strategic, experiential speaker, and what I mean by that is that he's strategic. He knows how to use stories and statistics to drive a point home, and he knows how to create an experience. People forget 90% of what they hear, but we have emotional memory. And so when you are able, and, and I'm a speech instructor, I teach people how to become strategic, experiential storytellers. When you're able to communicate and connect with an audience, one of the things that's very important is that that you never make a point without a story. You never tell a story without a point. And, and so using stories that stick, that people can see within the context of that story, whoa, I can do that. I can make that happen. I can do more to inspire people, to transform their mind, to expand their skill set, and to invite them to become a part of a community of greatness, to me, is what a great speaker does. And that's what President Barack Obama did when he was running for office and he said, change we can believe in. He was inviting people to become a part of a vision, a community of thinking that, that the world as it is now, we don't have to accept it, that we have the power to change it. Today, I think he's one of the greatest orators on the planet. Uh, former President Bill Clinton is a very powerful communicator. I mean, to this day, I, I admire hearing him speak. and and the sound that he has, the warmth in which he, he conveys. Um, former President Al Gore is a very uh, effective communicator. I love the richness of his voice and how commanding that sound is and his ability to sell a vision and to, to orchestrate and be the drum major for a mission to, to make people aware of, of global warming, warming. So when we look at all of the, the communicators today, I think President Barack Obama, um, former President Al Gore and, and, and former President Bill Clinton, I think they're at the top, top of the game for me. Great. Uh, what about books? Uh, what, are, what are the greatest books you have ever read? Aside from the Bible, let me see. I, I, I love, there's a book called Secret of the Ages by Robert Collier. It's a, it's a very powerful book. And it's, it's one of those early books that I read in a, in a book called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen, that those two books really uh, helped to create a shift in my thinking and how I, I saw myself. Of course, I enjoy Thinking Grow Rich and the Power of Positive Thinking by Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. They're very, very strong books as well. As you are such a powerful speaker, you spoke about powerful speaking. How, how did you become such a powerful speaker yourself? 
Well, people say that I'm a powerful speaker. I think I'm a, a much more effective speech coach. But I study. I, I believe that as you look at yourself and you have the, the, the sacred opportunity to speak to audiences, to inspire them, because at the end of the day, when we speak to an audience, there are three things that we want to accomplish. We want to change their collective thinking. That's number one and how they see themselves and the story they believe about themselves. Um, the second thing is that our goal is, is to not only change their thinking, but to broaden and to expand their vision of what's possible in their lives. And the third thing is to inspire them to become, as Mother Teresa would say, to become a pencil in the hand of God and start writing a new chapter in their lives. And so I think that what what people admire me for and why I, I received the highest award from the National Speakers Association and, and Toastmasters International Golden Gavel Award and was selected among the top five speakers in the world. I think what they admire me for is the impact that I've made with audiences achieving the objectives that I just talked about because when, when people hear you speak, the golden objective is for them to leave there feeling better about themselves and, and talking about the experience that you created for them to get that vision of themselves. Oliver Wendell Holmes said that once a man or woman's mind has been expanded with an idea, concept, or experience, it can never be satisfied to going back to where it was. And my goal is to, when I speak to an audience, is never allow them to be comfortable with living a life of mediocrity, of being comfortable with being average. With people who are living a level of, of, of being average those individuals are going through life doing the things that they feel that they need to do. But when you're an entrepreneur, you're living from a, a place of responsibility. You go through life doing the things that you are called to do, that you see yourself uh, answering the calling on your life, doing those things that create value for people, that will make a difference in people, and that will leave a legacy. How many of you, since you've been here, you have gotten some value that will impact your life personally and your bottom line? Raise your hands, please. That's what I mean. It consists of the wills and the will numbers. In order to be successful, you must be willing to do the things today. Invest in yourself. Give some coaching. In order to be successful, you must be willing to do the things today. Develop strategic relationships with people that you can learn from that others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow. Others won't have. You're investing in yourself. You're coming here, flying here, driving here. You're taking the time to learn new strategies and how you can offset the competition makes you different. You're uncommon. One great American said, I choose not to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk, to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the still calm of utopia. I will never cow before a master, nor bend to any threat. It's my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid, to face the world boldly and say, this I have done. That's why you became an entrepreneur. That's why you're here. You have the boldest and uncommon desire to control your own destiny. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come on, bring it to the How do you get ready for, a, for an important speech? Well, one of the things that I teach in, in terms of preparation for a speech is, 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 is find as much about the audience as possible. Who are you going to speak to? Do what I call communications intelligence. You, you want to get all the information about that organization, the mindset of the audience, uh, what are the goals and objectives they want to achieve. We have a needs assessment that we will provide for you. Uh, what is it that these entrepreneurs are looking for? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? What do they bring to the table of business? Um, how do they see themselves locally and globally in the scheme of things? Um, what is it at the end of that presentation that you want people to walk away from? And then what I do is craft a message. Um, and in the embodiment of that message and that presentation and that workshop, the things that will allow them 
to achieve those objectives, if it's to um, improve their skill set, if it's to, in, to expand their attitude and their vision of themselves and what's possible for them, if it's to challenge them and to inspire them to take their lives to the next level. Those will be the things that we will emphasize in that presentation that as a result of them being exposed to that experience and the information and, 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 and all of the things that I've learned over the years of doing this, that they leave there with something of value that they can sink their teeth into, that they can go and start applying it in their lives and in their businesses. Why is personal development uh, such an important thing for people? Uh, personal development is very important to people I believe is because of the fact that how people live their lives is a result of the story they believe about themselves. And we develop a vision of what's possible for ourselves between the ages of zero and six according to various studies. And so according to your circumstances, to your culture, to your environment, that to a large extent begin to, to create a vision of yourself. Only 5% of people for the most part achieve their true greatness in life and, and make a real greater impact than the average person. Only 5%. Usually the, the, it is, the percentages of those who achieve um, self-actualization is really between 3% to 5% of the world population. And so I believe that the more people discover the truth of who they are, that will free them up to use the power that they have to do more, to, to have more inventions, to create more cures for things that's impacting um, humanity, to reduce uh, poverty in the world and homelessness and, and give people a sense of, of, of power that, that they would not have as a result of, of working on themselves. When you work on yourself and you expand your vision of yourself, you are able to make a greater impact in life. I've traveled around the world and, and I've earned millions of dollars helping people to build businesses, to make a difference in their community. Um, I used to be a state legislator. I passed 14 pieces of legislation when I was elected to the Ohio legislature. I've been a community activist. All of these is a result of the vision, the mindset transformation that took place within me. And so when I speak to people about personal development, I'm talking from a place of knowing, of, of um, achieving. And so personal development is, is important because what it does, it, it, it inspires people to live an achievement-driven life as opposed to just earning enough money to take care of yourself and your family and then you die one day. You know, Horace Mann said, we should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. So when people develop themselves and discover the truth about who they are, they live a life of contribution. What is success? How do you define success? To me, success is living a life of service. It's, it's, it's thinking about how is it that my life can be an instrument to leave the world in better shape than how I found it. It's, 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 it's um, what is it that I can do that I can give to others that I bring? If it's my music, if it's my artwork, if it's my words, if it's, it's, if it's living a life of a, of a Mother Teresa, if it's um, one of a Winston Churchill, if it's, um, if it's a President Barack Obama, it's, it's about making an impact with your life to me, of, of being of service to humanity. That to me, uh, doing something that's a passion of yours, that, that you feel in your heart, where the heart is there, your, your treasure is also. That to me is living a life of success. That's a great definition. Thank you. Um, about the weekend seminar that we will have. Yes. What can we wait from you at the weekend seminar in Finland in autumn? People can expect an experience that will transform how they see themselves. The people that come will never be the same again. You will discover a part of you that you don't know right now and you will get some tools, methods and strategies that will allow you to achieve your personal goals, your business goals and be able to make a greater impact with your life. Great.
<laughs> yes. I'm attending. <laughs> All right. I am too. I'm excited to be there. I just cannot wait. It is going to be an incredible experience and I'm going to grow from it as well. I'll be going to all the workshops and seminars because I'm still growing. I'm still developing myself. Yeah. I was about to ask about that also. Uh, what are you waiting from us or f from the event yourself? Well, one of the things that I believe that you're never too young to teach and you're never too old to learn. I am 66. And so at this stage of our life, uh, life is still exciting for me. Hel Helen Keller said, life is either a daring adventure or it's boring. So I haven't done my best stuff yet. I I'm, <laughs> while people in my age category are retired, I'm refired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. You spoke about Al Gore a bit already. Yes. The other main keynote speaker is Al Gore, mm -hmm. Vice President Al Gore. How do you like him or his work? I love his work and I admire him. I admire what he represents, the kind of life of contribution that, that he has lived and, and, and his passion to still make a difference for the planet. I love his speaking style. I love, as I mentioned earlier, the power and the resonance of his voice and, and his thinking. He's a very brilliant man. that. A lot of people have just underestimated it, just really have not had a great appreciation for how brilliant he is. So I'm excited about learning from him. I've been studying his, his career for many years, and I'm excited about sharing the platform with him as well. Whatever number you came up with in terms of growing your business, in terms of attracting more customers, retaining customers, increasing your sales, I want you to multiply that 10 times the business that you're going to generate this year and beyond. And I want you to think about your social contribution. One of the goals I have is to reduce the number of women who die from breast cancer. My mother was a 22-year breast cancer conqueror. How many men over 40? Raise your hands, please. Yes, now one of the goals I have is to reduce the number of men who die from prostate cancer. 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. My PSA was 125. And I had 238 radiation seeds. And now as I stand here, my PSA is over 2,000. And I'm cancer free, debt free, and drama free. Because of God's grace and mercy. And trust me, it's better to be seen than to be viewed. Do you feel it, brother, up and here, up and here? One of the goals I have is to, create, to reduce the number of men who die from prostate cancer, sharing with them the need for them to get their PSA test and their digital rectal examination. And I'll be glad when they can check our prostate by looking in our ears. <laughs> can you feel the brother up in here, up in here? I'm turning red as I talk about this, but you can't see it. <laughs> I was at this medical convention, a friend of mine was a urologist, said, hey Les, let me give you a free rectal. I said, no buddy, you're too motivated. <laughs> you will also have there a two-hour coaching about powerful speaking. Yes. What can we expect from that? In the, in the seminar, I'm going to be teaching people a strategy that will allow them to develop and discover their power voice. The three things that I do as a speaker that no one else does, and, and, and the people that I've taught have used it, and they've gone on to, to build uh, multi-million dollar businesses, to advance causes that they believe in in their communities. Um, they've been able to, to make a greater impact nationally and globally. And, and what I'm going to teach people that's very different than what's being taught around the planet, what are the most important and, and largest organizations that's been teaching people how to communicate is the Dale Carnegie course. And one of the, 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 the principles they teach is tell them what you're going to tell them, talking about the audience, tell them and then tell them what you told them. Well, my, my training, and that's a very great course, and I admire them and the work that they do. Uh, my training goes just the opposite. When I train speakers and the people that come into the seminar, I'm going to teach you how to conduct communications intelligence. I will teach you the value of never let what you want to say get in the way of what the audience needs to hear. And that in all thy getting, get understanding. Find out who they are 
and then craft a message using stories, statistics, and experiences, special moments that will transform the audience. Because when we speak, the strategy that I will teach you how to implement is uh, distract, dispute, and inspire. How to speak in a commanding way that will distract people from the story they currently believe about themselves. Through the strategic delivery of your message, cause them to back away from the possibility blindness that's keeping them stuck, and then inspire them to begin to take on new challenges in their lives, to get out of their comfort zone, because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. Distract, dispute, and inspire. People who come to that training will learn how to apply that in their presentations to grow their businesses, to influence people, to inspire audiences, to bring the best out of people, to challenge people to take their lives higher. About your goals, I bet you have achieved many goals in your life. Yes. Uh, what is your next goal in life? Well, my goal is to train globally 10,000 voices. These are messengers that will provide a global impact locally and internationally. 10,000 voices of hope. When people have hope in the future, that gives you power in the present. That's number one. Number two is to expand the skill set. There's no shortage of money or opportunity. There's a shortage of capacity. And so expand the skill set of people so that they can be you so they can begin to use all their abilities and their capacity to to be able to make a greater impact with their lives and to galvanize and create communities of greatness i believe that we all have greatness within us and that as we learn the methods and techniques of being in a perpetual state of discomfort all of us will be able to discover things about ourselves that we don't know right now and to live from a place of greatness and taking greater responsibility for what we want out of life. Henry, it was George, George Bernard Shaw said, the people that make it in this life look around for the circumstances that they want and if they can't find them, they create them. That's living a life of contribution. It's being responsible and living from a place of greatness. Thank you, Les Proud. Thank you for this interview. Mm -hmm. And as you say, it has been a plum pleasing pleasure as, as well as a privilege. Yes, thank <laughs> so you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you and I appreciate the difference that you're making with your life. And because you were born, the world will never be the same again. Thank you. Thanks.